Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, we'll be talking about how you can back up your Yokugawa FastTools HMI application. My FastTools application resides in D Drive Yokugawa FastTools and this is where my application is. So if you're not familiar with Yokugawa FastTools, uh, TLS is a directory where you have all your graphics, tags, everything, including scripts all defined in here. You can make it distributive, uh, you can store half of it in uh, program files and the other half to the user. But uh, for this demonstration, uh, I'll be using one directory. But uh, the backup script that I'll be demonstrating here works for both uh, distributed or rather distributed directory as in a part of it, what well, part of the TLS is in program files and the other part is in user directory and also works in one directory like this. And also uh, the backup script works uh, when your FastTools is running or when the fast tools is stopped. So right now my fast tools is stopped. So I'm going to start my fast tools. But before you do that, uh, if you don't know where your TLS directory is, let me show you how you can find out. Open your command prompt and type set TLS. And they will tell you exactly where your TLS directory is, the like history, data, log, list, save file, and, and uh, warp. This is for wireless access protocol. So anyway, so that's where you get. So I'm going to start my fast tools application here by going to start so once it started okay uh, you can uh, run the script but again this script can run both when your fast source is stopped or started Okay, I've got my fast tool started. So the next thing you need is uh, a script to back it up. So I have my script in here. So this is in a text format right now. So let me let me open it up uh, and show you what's in there. So normally when when the fast tool, when a Yokugawa engineer sends you the backup script, the the file name extension will always be txt format, as you can see here. Uh, TLS underscore backup dot txt. The reason behind that is obviously uh, a lot of email server blocks uh, script commands uh, like dot cmd or dot bat. That's why they always send it that way. But uh, once you receive this, this is what it looks like. Okay. Uh, what you have to do once you receive this is to rename the file name extension. So I'm going to go to the uh, the directory where the the script is. So what you have to do is rename it like that. TLS. And I'm going to keep the name consistent and you got to change the file name extension to CMD and you can see how the icon changed from sublime which is my text editor you can be a notepad on your computer to uh, a command icon like that okay now it's locked and loaded it's ready to do backup uh, the, the location where this backup will go when you run it would be in your C drive itself and it'll be under T uh, TLS underscore backup you'll see all the uh, all the uh, log file coming in here as you run it. Uh, you don't have to open. You do not have to open this command window in admin. You can open in a regular login as well. So let's get started. TLS command. You can see it tells you that it's uh, put, putting all the backup file in uh, TLS underscore backup slash so and so. While this thing is running on the side here, let me give you a quick uh, insight into the directory. So the biggest file you will have would be your history file naturally because they're always running your history are all logged in here I don't have mine running for a long time this is a demo application but one thing I want to highlight here is that anything that ends with six zeros one two three four five six those are set up file for the history so the only files that end with six zeros will be backed up anything other than that these are actually uh, tables uh, or historical tables that uh, fast tools uses right so just to keep in mind you'll see so with that being said if you go to your TLS directory here you will have two files two zip files once this is done one of them will be dedicated for history and the other one is your application itself so now you can see this is completed so you have two files they give you a, back, a log of uh, all the thing that was done I'm gonna close this log file so if, if you open the history, you'll see that uh, they have compressed only those files ending with six zeros at the back. Like I said, those are systemic settings, but nevertheless, they have also done uh, some of those. 
This is not really necessary. I'm not too sure why they did this. I think there's something on the script that they have done it. But uh, uh, push come to shove. If these files are too big, uh, just erase them. And what you need is any files ending with six zeros. So that's one thing. Another thing is this one here. This is your actual application itself. Like I show you, the uh, if you go back to your uh, fast tools application here, this is this directory itself. Whatever's in here is in here, apart from history. That's the only directory that's missing. So let me go back in here. Okay, so that's how you do a backup of your application. But if you do want to keep a backup of a history, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these guys here. If you want to do want to make a backup of uh, your history and everything in there, all you have to do is run this command again, right? So just hold on, let me show you where, where am I here. So this command here, TLS backup, TLS backup, and you what you do is that you put a flag of do hist, just like that, and you hit enter. It will do the same thing again, but this time around, they will save all the historical files in there as well. Anyway, this 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 one will take a bit longer uh, than than the other one. But again, uh, my application is not that big because it's just a demo application, so it might be quick in that way. So um, why do we have two different uh, types of scripting, one with flag do history and the other one not? It's pretty obvious the answer because uh, if you were to do a complete backup of your application, what happens is that uh, uh, some of the apps can be anywhere between 3 and I've seen 16 gigabyte even after you do a zip. So sending that through the network can be a bit taxing. So uh, that's why we run uh, tlsbackup.cmd only. Unless otherwise you absolutely need history for backing up and whatnot, then you run the flag do history. Uh, those without do history is naturally smaller in size. Again, without history, right? So anyway, um, I'm going to let this go for a bit here. Okay, she's done. So you can see, if you go back in again, and you do have a bit more information in here. I'm not too sure just now they had a few other extra six or seven files in there. Um, I'm not too sure why they did that, but uh, you can see there's slightly more data in here this time around. Uh, again, those ending with six zeros are set up for your history. You absolutely need that, but uh, they have more data in there this time around here. So, because uh, I've ran this program a bit, so if you look at the other file here, again, this is pretty much consistent. They are the same uh, apart from his file. So if I go back here again, just for clarity, D drive, and this is where my TLS folder is. Only thing that's missing is your his directory, which is on the other zip directory there. This directory. Anyway, I hope this uh, quick tutorial on how to make backup of your fast tools help. Again, I'll leave the script on my blog and the link to the blog on this uh, video. Uh, I hope this helps. Anyway, have a good day. Bye now.